everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are really excited today. We have an interview with one of the stars for our upcoming movie, uh, Christmas Tree Lane, and we're looking forward to seeing it. And uh, we have Brianna Price here. I'm film critic Rachel Wagner. And Brianna, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm excited about this. Yes. So uh, what we've been doing, starting off our interviews lately, is we've just been asking uh, about this crazy time quarantine. What has the experience been like for you? And uh, have you been doing any quarantine crafts or quarantine baking or anything like that? Um, and it's it's been, I'm sure, just like everybody else has been up and down. Like there are some days where I'm like, this is great. I'm at home. I'm relaxed. <laughs> Yeah. Everything's fantastic. And then there's days where there's existential dread, of course. Um, so it's been, I think that it's been an up and down thing, but I think what's been interesting about it is I've had a lot of time to like, to deal with myself. And I think that's like an important thing to remember for me at least is like, this is a time that we might not get again to like really understand where we're at, like physically, emotionally, spiritually, all that stuff. So I've been grateful for that. Now in terms of baking, mm -mm, no, I'm not <laughs> No, ma'am. But I did like I was like cooking for a little bit because, you know, it's better for everything. And I don't want to go out to restaurants. That's kind of stopped because I'm getting lazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I would say that most of my quarantine has been reading a lot of books, watching a lot of TV. Um, I've been in nature a lot, go on hikes, go to the beach, stuff like that. I'm in L.A., so I'm by the beach. Um, connecting with my friends via Zoom, Zoom happy mm -hmm. hours, which are super sad, but it's better than, I guess, no social contact at all. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's yeah. how my quarantine has been. Yeah, well, that sounds pretty good, considering yeah. it all. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite thing you binged? Whew, man. When people ask me what I've watched, I can't even remember it, because I just feel like I've watched everything. I've watched mm -hmm. all of every platform um i really liked the um the great i watched that on hulu i loved that, oh, yeah. that was wonderful um i also really like i may destroy you on hbo mm. super okay. super dark but also like very well written and, i haven't heard of that one i have to say oh so good like so <laughs> it's triggering and it's funny because on set me and alicia were actually talking about this show and she texted me when we were when we were wrapped like whoa you're right this show's a lot um, but it's like, it's, it, talk, it tackles a lot of important issues and I think it doesn't give any answers, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's a cool show because you have to kind of formulate your own answers, figure out who you think is the antagonist and the protagonist. It's, oh. it's smart. Also so killing. It's, it's a narrative, not like docuseries. Yeah, it's a narrative. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I, yeah. I hadn't heard of that one. Uh, yeah. I watched, uh, started out the quarantine watching McMillions and that's uh -huh. still I think my favorite thing uh -huh. I've watched as far as a binging kind of thing uh -huh. uh, on on HBO uh, mm -hmm. it was so entertaining <laughs> what is that about I've McMillions seen that. it's a docuseries about this scam that uh, this really eclectic group did uh, on the McDonald's uh, monopoly in the early 2000 like in 2000 and uh, the thing about it, I think it makes it more entertaining than a typical uh, uh, typical Ponzi scheme type story yeah. is that there's really nobody's hurt in this. I right. mean, because right. McDonald's was giving the money anyway. Right. So nobody is, it's truly is a victimless crime. <laughs> and uh, so yeah. I don't know, it's because sometimes you feel like, oh, I feel bad because yeah. people's lives are destroyed, you know, watching this, but um, but in this case, that's not the case. And it's just fascinating and really entertaining. And the investigator, uh, Doug Matthews is his name. Uh -huh. He's insane and just like born for television. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm putting that on my list. I will be yes. watching that <laughs> <laughs> He shows up for one of the meetings wearing this yellow, like McDonald's suit. Uh -huh. and <laughs> things and I don't know. He's just, he's a character. Uh, so uh, I I highly recommend. I thought it was so good, but but yeah, there's been a lot of a lot of interesting. It's been kind of a time that obviously we haven't had all these movies that we wanted to see right. that have been delayed, and uh, so you've been kind of been forced to sort of dig a little bit deeper yeah. and find those things you might have have not watched. Uh, like I'm normally not much of a series person, not yeah. much of a TV person. Yeah. I'm usually a movie person and. 
I have had as a film critic, I kind of have to be, um, but yeah. I've had, I've gotten, I've had to, you know, sort of dig a little deeper and watch things I wouldn't have normally watched. It's just been fun. Yeah, right. And there's like so much content that I know. <laughs> like, you're, you'll be able to watch probably like two years worth of stuff. Yeah. If, if we have to continue with this quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and now they're back up filming. So that's right. good news. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I, I also really enjoyed Sweet Magnolia's uh, I don't know if you guys see that. But. I, Alicia was talking about that too. Like uh-huh. I haven't watched, generally like this sweet, and this is maybe, maybe the antithesis of Hallmark, but like this sweet, like feel good stuff, yeah. I never gravitate towards. I like want something that like challenges me and makes me like, yeah. um, but maybe that's what I need for comfort. <laughs> right yeah. Now. It was just very well executed. And I thought that the characters were really well done. It's very well cast. And, yeah. and uh, it's not just our main, main girls that are the thrusts of the show. Actually, the teenage cast is really good. And, oh, wow. and uh, I, I, really, I really did enjoy it. It was very entertaining. Yeah. Uh, Vir- Virgin River is also probably a little bit darker. So if you want uh, a little bit darker than that and supposedly they filmed season two so where is it why aren't they releasing it i don't know but um but uh you might like that a little bit better than if you like a little more edge yeah but they're yeah. both good cool cool anyway well, i have nothing but time so i'll be watching them eventually <laughs> <laughs> you have to let us know what you think when you say it <laughs> but uh so according they had a little bio on the uh, Hallmark Movies Mysteries page for the movie. Yeah. And they said that in the bio that you were preparing to be a doctor uh, before you decided to go into the, to acting. Uh, what was, what about that? How did you, how did, what's your story as okay. far as getting into So acting? I went to college on the East Coast and like, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And my family is like full of academics. My dad's a professor, my mom's a doctor. So like, there was just like not, there was not a conversation about art. There was never like, oh, you could be mm-hmm. an artist. That was right. never a conversation. Um, so I got to college and I'm like, well, I'm good at science. So I guess I should be a doctor. Like that's what people do, right? Like they just do what is expected of them. And then when I was in college, I joined this dance group. Um, and also I'm in New York. So like, I'm taking classes in the city. I'm going to performances. Like I'm very much in the culture of like art. And I've always had a proclivity towards it. And then I booked a job as a dancer and I'm like, nobody told me that you could make money doing something you like doing. Nobody ever told me that. So I just pivoted. Like I was, I took, you know, I took getting ready to take MCATs, getting ready to like really move forward and, you know, be a doctor for all that's worth. But I always felt like it wasn't like, what I wanted it was just something that I would suffer through um Mm -hmm. and when I found something that I actually really enjoy doing I just pivoted my parents are still holding on to the hope that I'm going to medical school (laughs) so if you're listening mom and dad's not happening (laughs) sorry Uh, (laughs) not happening um so yeah so then I you know I booked a couple jobs as a dancer and then continued to pursue that um the first part of my entertainment career was as a dancer so yeah that's amazing. So had you grown up in dance or yeah, was that? Yeah, kind of. Like I did ballet when I was younger in the way that like most kids do ballet. So like not too seriously. Um, and then when I was 13, I stopped doing ballet. Um, but I always just like liked movement. I liked music. It was always kind of involved in my like high school life and things like that. Um, but I never pursued it in a serious way. So it was there, but it was never like, this is an option. So that's really interesting because I think there's this impression that if you don't get started in in something like dance or theater or something like that, when you're, you know, a toddler, then there's no hope to be able to, uh, to be able to really do it. Yeah. I think that's a false narrative. Yeah. um, Obviously. I think that you could do whatever you want to do if you decide to do it. Like, I think it just comes down to like a decision um, Mm -hmm. and a desire, but yeah, I think, I mean, yes, of course, it's probably easier if you start something when you're two and then continue doing that thing always, of course, but, you know, we're multifaceted. We have different interests and things shift and change. So like, I don't mm-hmm. think it's ever too late for anything personally. Yeah. yeah, I love that. That's great. That's great. And uh, so, yeah, you, uh, you uh, worked on Glee as a dancer, is that correct? I did. I did. So what was that like? 
that experience. It was amazing, actually. Like, I, um, I had a really great experience on that set. The choreographers were fantastic. The cast was super fun. It was just a very efficient job. Like, it was probably one of the most efficient dance jobs I had done to that point. And we were just treated really well. It was fun and light. And, like, you know, we got to dance to great music. And it was, I literally have no complaints about that job. It was one of my mm -hmm. favorites. To yeah. this point. yeah for sure that's cool what's one of the more memorable uh numbers that you did okay two <laughs> one of them was womanizer by britney spear uh -huh. and we're in a gym and like we're like working yeah. out that was pretty early in the show yeah that's yeah so, like yeah. season like four or something season mm -hmm. five maybe um and then another one was to um what is that the Robin Thicke song, the Hey, Hey, Hey. That oh, song. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, was it um, Blurred Lines? Yeah. So then we had another um, number where we're supposed to be twerking to Blurred Lines. That was a fun day, too. Um, so yeah. those are my two standout moments. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds really good. So you also did a Nicki Minaj tour. Is that correct? I did. I did. So what is that experience like, do being on a tour? Uh, such, with such a big name like that. Well, it's funny. That was like my first big job, honestly. Like before that I had done like little things here and there, but like that was my first like notable job. So for me, everything was completely brand new. Um, it was definitely overwhelming for sure. Cause I just didn't know up from down at that point. Um, but it was cool to travel and like be on huge stages at like the Staples Center or, you know, these huge basketball stadiums where you you know, it's just like lights for days and you can hear the scream. So that was an experience that like I cherish. I feel like I grew so much on that tour as like a artist and a human in a number of ways. But um, it was, it was a lot. Like it was, it was intense. It was very intense. We didn't have a lot of rest. It was from one city to the next and it was just very like high octane. Um, that's actually when I was like, I think maybe I should pivot to acting. This is really exhausting. <laughs> I can only imagine that that is incredibly exhausting every day, you know, or close to every day, you know, doing those kinds of things yeah. uh, would be exhausting. Of course, now we're like missing live performance so much. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, yeah. And so hopefully we'll, we'll get it back soon, sooner rather than sometime soon because we miss it so much. I, I feel like I would go at this point, if it was safe, I would go see just about anybody. I don't even care. Yeah, like, I would go to any performance of anything. Yeah. <laughs> anything. Like, literally, it could be a complete performance piece, an art piece. I don't care. Yeah, me Even too. Around in a bark. Let me just see somebody perform, please. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, me too. Uh, so if you, you've done theater... Um, do, you, do you have a preference of what you like uh, doing theater or film? I like both for different reasons. Um, with theater, like you kind of form a family, like you're with each other for almost eight to 10 hours a day rehearsing, like you just become very tight knit with the cast. Um, and then also I think for theater, it's such like an actor's medium. So there's no, there's no like, there's no safety net. So if you mess up on stage, like you have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And something about that's really exciting for me because it's also instant like feedback and there's this energy coming from the audience and then we're giving it back. So it's this exchange of energy that I really love. Um, and you just can't fake the fun. Like either you're there or you're not. And mm -hmm. I like the rawness of it. Now film is a completely different beast because you get, you know, different takes. It's much more subtle. It's, it's closer and you form a different type, type of family. So I like both. Um, I want to continue to do both for the rest of my life. Like, I feel like it's a good balance to be able to extrovert that talent in a theater, but then also bring it in and like connect with more people, right? Because especially in the world we're in, if mm -hmm. something is on film or if it's digital, more people have access to it than, you know, a couple hundred people in a theater you know, a couple nights a week. So yeah. I like both. 
Oh, We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. They're the good folks over at Mod Cloth. And at Mod Cloth, we make getting dressed fun. Back to being independently owned, we're all about perfect fits for everybody. Unique, mood boosting prints, vintage inspired, versatile styles that make you look good, but more importantly, feel good. Find your joy at Mod Cloth. And one of the things that impressed me the most about Mod Cloth is they really do have something for everyone. They have every size you could imagine, uh, and they have every style. Uh, everybody's going to be able to find a print that they like and a style that they like. And it's cool because you can have a unique look. And there's so many different times when you want to stand out, but you don't want it to be bizarre or strange. And this is a, I think Mod Cloth is a great way to do so, to have a fun, uh, sometimes festive inspired print. Right now they have the, the Halloween inspired prints. Uh, they have all different styles and you can have your own unique look without looking ridiculous. And in fact, you are going to be uh, a standout wherever you go in the mod cloth designs and looks. I was definitely looking at getting a new winter coat because they had some really, really cute styles. And so definitely you want to check it out. So to get 20% off your purchase of $75 or more, including sale items, go to modcloth.com. That's M O D C L O T H dot com and enter code Hallmarkies at checkout. This promo code cannot be combined with other offers. That's once again, go to modcloth.com, M O D C L O T H dot com, enter code Hallmarkies. Working on a project when things were canceled. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep, I was. I was working on a play, and so that's mm. not luck for that play. I don't think that's oh. coming back for a while. But, oh, uh, man. Darn it. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I love live theater so much. I There's just an energy and an excitement. Yeah. Uh, if uh, Assuming, I mean, they are going to be doing the uh, Christmas carols here in Utah live, which is, but I don't think I'm going to go. I don't yeah. think it'll be there yet for me, but, yeah. um, uh, but if I don't go, that'll be the first year I haven't gone to see Christmas Carol in probably my whole adult life, except for my mission. Yeah. So that'll be so sad. Oh. <laughs> I always go. <laughs> 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 uh darn covid it's the worst I know, I know. It so much. uh but but yeah i just love it, it means as much as i love watching christmas carol in film i uh, i i just love seeing it in live theater every year it's so yeah. special to me yeah yeah <sighs> yeah but i don't know that one great thing about america is that we are great at adaptability and uh, and taking a situation and making a bad situation into a good situation so i hopefully they'll find some way to make this i don't know whether they will record uh shows and then sell them for you know maybe they can do that i don't know what they're gonna do but it's just it's just hard yeah it's really hard <laughs> Yeah, but I think what's important, like what I've been trying to let, like tell myself is like, this is also just temporary. So like, if we can endure through this and like, you know, just kind of hold, like hold fast, we'll appreciate everything so much more. On oh yeah, topic. that's for sure. You know, like we won't take anything for granted the way that we probably were before. So yeah, and we get that vaccine which is looking pretty promising. So yeah. fingers crossed yeah. that that will make a big difference too. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see. So Christmas tree lane, uh, this is your first role for Hallmark, I believe. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, so it's very exciting. This uh, has Alicia Witt, who we have talked with on our podcast and Andrew Walker, who we've had on, like three or four times so we love him yeah. he's great and so that's a pretty fun cast yeah it was a great like it was interesting because you know we're filming this in the middle of covid and you know i'm in la so i'm going to utah so this is also like an environment that i'm not mm -hmm. super familiar with so I was, I was like oh man this you know i'm nervous i'm nervous about sure. what the experience is going to be and honestly the people on that set were just wonderful like i have no 
other adjective besides it was just like everybody was welcomed with open arms. Alicia was an amazing, amazing like leader of the cast. Andrew was also super sweet and open and like we had so many honest conversations. It just felt like a family. Like it didn't feel like we were working. Um, it felt like we were playing mm -hmm. and it was so fun. I had such a great time. He was one of the first productions to start up in Utah at least. Yeah post a post a lockdown yeah so what was that like it was nerve-wracking i mean like there were protocol in place right so with masks and we like before we shot we take our masks off and you know we all had like separate spaces how we got food was a little bit different but you know after we kind of got into the rhythm of it it didn't feel so foreign anymore it felt like any other set um also because it was like this insulated family that we we just saw each other all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it turned out to be actually completely fine. I felt safe. I felt taken care of um, on a number of fronts, all the producers, the director. They just made sure that we were in a, in a place where we felt safe. And if we didn't, we had the freedom to express that. So I was really grateful um, mm -hmm. to just be, to felt like I was being taken care of, you know. Um, yeah, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be in terms of like paranoia. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So you had like, you felt like you had your space and you, you mm -hmm. were, uh, you were safe and yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. good to hear. That's very good. Uh, yeah. And so why don't you tell us a little bit about the movie and your role? Okay. So the movie is about Christmas tree lane, obviously. <laughs> and the Christmas tree lane is under threat of, you know, basically getting like, you know, taken over by a conglomerate. Oh, yes. And the mission is to, to preserve history, preserve tradition. So my role, I play Emma, um, and Emma is the best friend of Meg, Alicia, who's, who's played by Alicia. And essentially, I'm just there to, like, support her moving forward and also encourage her to open her eyes to all of the things life has to offer, um, explore the world, demand more of herself, push for the things that she wants romantically and um and musically and and for the street for for our home mm -hmm. you guys do like a benefit or something like that right for yeah, yeah. Singing. Yeah, yeah yeah so so alicia is of course a singer mm -hmm. so you and it looked like a, in the clips that you were singing as well no no I'm okay no. <laughs> no that's my that's like my daughter my daughter is like oh, okay alicia's or meg's student so my daughter is a singer. I am just a bystander. Okay. I am an audience member. <laughs> okay. I can tell in the clip. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Uh, it'll be fun to get to, it looks like there's a, a recital, you just like a benefit where they, yeah. so we're going to get some music yeah. in the yeah. movie. Yeah. We're going to get some music and Alicia wrote, I think most, all of it, maybe I'm, I think all mm -hmm. of it. Um, and yeah, we're gonna get sprinkles of music throughout it. Um, the finale is where we really get to see the the beautiful song that she worked on, and it's it's gorgeous. Like I remember shooting that scene, and I was like, "This, I feel like I'm actually at Christmas right now, even though I'm sweating because it's July 4th. <laughs> and I'm wearing this jacket, but it's 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 good. It's super feel good, and I feel like it's just what we need right now in terms mm -hmm. of like. A, a little bit of escapism and B, also just like that, you know, the, the snugly warm feeling of, of times past, you know, yeah. we can use that, that nostalgia right now. Yeah, I was talking to Amy Winter, who is the EVP over in, at Lifetime, uh -huh. and she said that, uh, that there's sort of all the more reason to have these Christmas movies be before Halloween this year because there isn't really going to be a normal Halloween. So like, <laughs> just like feel like we all just kind of want to move up. All right, let's go on to Christmas right now. And I thought that was a really good point. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, also, I feel like it gives us something to kind of look forward to. It's like, okay, Christmas, which then marks the end of this year, which then marks hopefully a better year next year, you know? So yeah, I think that all of this is very useful. Bringing joy to people's life right now is like, it's very important, very important. So yeah, I mean, I felt it because I've been, uh, I'm a, I'm single, so I've been basically alone. My parents live 
about 10 minutes away. So I've seen them some, but, but, uh, but aside from thinking, I mean, thankfully I have the podcast, but, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just all, all my normal sort of sources of community are all gone uh, except for the podcast. Uh, cause I, cause church has been canceled and the movies have been canceled. And you know, those were my two kind of big things as a film critic uh, and as a believer. So those two things taken away, that's been, uh, that's been hard. It's been yeah. a lot. So I need it just as much yeah. as anyone else. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. I need it. I need it too. And I was in it. I need it now. So I'm like, yes, Christmas, <laughs> please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you said that uh, you filmed it uh, in July. Uh, right. So yeah, what was that like uh, with your uh, with your coats on in the middle of the summer? Ooh, it was hot. I mean, it was hot. It was extremely <laughs> hot. They, and I was always wearing like five layers. I had like a shirt and then I had a sweater scarf. and I had like a jacket and a scarf and mittens and I was just swimming. <laughs> but uh, I mean, that's, 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 that's movies. They always do that. We're like, you're shooting a summer movie in the winter and vice versa. Um, so it was fine. Most of the time, most of my scenes were inside. I'm trying to think. And yeah, most of them were inside. So it wasn't overwhelmingly hot, but there was a couple of scenes that we were walking, walking and talking through the day. And I'm sure I'm like a bead of sweat is coming down right now. Hopefully this doesn't distract anybody when they're watching this. You're just walking really hard. This making right. me sweat. I really like determined to get where I gotta go. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I would just be concerned about staying hydrated. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Especially yeah. in this dry weather. Yeah. That you oh, have yeah. there. Dry. Yeah, it's so dry. That air is dry. I did not realize <laughs> the amount yeah. of serum I would have to be using on my face. Like, yeah. Yeah, you really need to have like constant lotion with you at all times. Now I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's not any better in the winter than the summer. In fact, sometimes it feels even more dry. Uh, and I, one time I, I went to, to New York and I was just doing sort of my normal routines. Yeah. Right. And then I was just like, Oh, I don't need all this lotion here. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> like, you get you get it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> you get used to it. But, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I, it was fun following Andrew's, uh, Insta stories that he was posting during the movie yeah, uh, and he was saying hey, he couldn't find a yoga mat and I'm like Andrew I could show you I could t- find you a yoga mat <laughs> sorry oh Andrew, oh, Andrew. That's funny. <laughs> yeah I could I can actually visualize this yeah now. yeah um, you're gonna go and check out his juice store there in it's LA so funny. it's like it's interesting so Aside from being an actor, I also teach yoga. So we were talking one day on set and he's like, yeah, I have this juice company, blah, 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 da, 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 da. I'm like, yeah, what's the name of it? He's like, Little Wet. And I'm like, look at a minute. They sell those juices at the studio I teach at. <laughs> so I have already had his Oh, there you go. Some to set and yeah, yes. So the answer is yes, I have. <laughs> I continue to support his company. Oh, very good. That's good to hear. <laughs> uh, so... It's very good. Um, the uh, I'm really looking forward to the film. I think it'll be really fun. Uh, I I think it's an interesting combination, Alicia and Andrew. I wouldn't have thought to cast them together, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what they do together. Yeah, it's it's you're in for a treat. It's definitely a fun movie. It's you know we're along for a ride. It's the romance. We get the romance. We get the Christmas. We get the you know the friendship and the love, which is like, I think I've said multiple times really important right now. So mm-hmm. it, it's a good vibe. It's definitely a good vibe. Very cool. Well, we have some fun questions that um, we like to end the interview off with. Some okay. fun holiday questions. So okay. here we go. <laughs> what is your favorite holiday drink? Ooh, um, eggnog and or an old fashioned. Okay, and or being the key there, oh, right? Combine them. Uh, okay. Uh, what is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? I love um, German chocolate cake. I, this is fully mm-hmm. not holiday themed, but my mom always makes German chocolate cake 
during the holidays. And so I associate that cake with Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um, and oh man, it's just, sounds delicious. Just to die. It's so good. So good. That's good. All right. What is your favorite Christmas song or Carol? (sighs) Okay. All right. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. (laughs) Okay. So do you know who BB and CC Winans are? Have you ever heard Mm -hmm. of them? Yeah. They have this Christmas album that my parents had playing in the house when I was little forever, probably since I was five on. And there's this song on the album. I don't know the name of the album, but it's old. It's like a 90s album called Give Me a Star by um, B.B. Winans. Uh-huh. And I just, even when I hear it to this day, I'll listen to it when I'm in a bad mood. Something about it makes me just feel so held and like comforted. Um, so that's probably my number one. Mm-hmm. That Not sounds a good. traditional one, but yeah. Very good. Uh, do you have a favorite Christmas classic movie? Miracle on 34th Street. Oh, good one. Very good. Yeah. All right. Young Natalie Wood. And the, the, the I forget his name, but the guy who played uh, Santa Claus won the Oscar for that. Yeah. 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 It's, that's a good one. I yeah. can hold it dearly in my heart. I feel like a, a role like that would never win these days. Oh, no. No, it has Maybe to be if like- it was Meryl Streep. That's the only person I could think of. Meryl Streep playing Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> she could win. But other than that, (laughs) Uh, okay, Uh, which is your favorite, Scrooge or the Grinch? Uh, The Grinch. Okay, good. Okay, which do you like better, clear lights or colored? Clear. Okay, would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? Snowball fight. Okay, good. Uh, (laughs) Would you consider yourself a good gift wrapper? No, no. <laughs> Domestic or beyond me, honestly. <laughs> I, I'm, I, if I, if I really focus, but most of the time I'm just too rushed. I'm not a very patient person, so okay, I'll put most in crafts yeah. are <laughs> pretty you go. bad for me. Uh, very good. Okay, what is your? Do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? And if you do, what's your what's your ugliest, ugliest Christmas sweater? You know, I don't have one. I don't. I like had one a couple years ago and it wasn't really that ugly. It was actually pretty cute. And also in LA, like there's just never a need for like a sweater. Like right now it's like 85 degrees, I think here, or mm-hmm. it's going to be like this during Christmas too, because that's how it always is. So I don't have one. Maybe you can get an ugly Christmas vest or something like that. Oh, good idea. Or it's like a t-shirt. Ugly yeah. Christmas t-shirt. Yeah. Like, they have those, those faux ugly Christmas uh t-shirts we actually have one even on our merch store uh but uh but yeah they uh and they they have those kind of made like commercialized ugly christmas sweaters but those aren't as good as when you can really find one like in the thrift store right. or something like that that's the best yeah <laughs> we actually wore this before okay yeah. okay. we're gonna get you an ugly christmas vest that's gonna be the goal <laughs> yeah that'll be my mission <laughs> Well, thank you so much. This was really fun. I really enjoyed getting to talk with you and getting to to know you. And uh, so thanks for coming on and talking with us. And do you have social media that people could follow if they if they want? I do. I have um, Instagram and um, Twitter. I'm getting rid of my Facebook. Okay, good. All right. We'll yeah. put that in the description section. So people can follow you. That would be really fun. We're definitely looking forward to the film. And uh, yeah, you all can follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. And make sure you're following the podcast at Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so, so much. We have our patron group and merch store. Lots of fun stuff coming up uh, in our Christmas coverage. So thanks so much, Brianna. We really appreciate it. And Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>